Hey everybody, this is Harry here, um, coming to you with a video, um, all stuffed up, cold, bronchitis, been battling that, been having a hard time uh, trying to make videos, this is probably the sixth time I've, I've tried today to make a video without hacking up alone. <clears throat> I tried to make one last week for genre files with animation, but I, with the bronchitis being bad as it was, I, I didn't feel like making one so um so anyways wanted to talk about a movie um actually i wanted to talk about Sidney portier but i could be here all day talking about him he's one of my favorite actors from the classics cary grant being my top favorite actor of the classic era but uh Sidney portier is up up there my top five um film actors and I don't think at least when I you know looked on YouTube I didn't see too many people talking about him or his films and he had played a culturally uh, I don't want to say culturally but he made a difference in films that changed the culture of films I should say <clears throat> he was the first leading African American actor in a film and a major studio film um, before that, you didn't really have major, um, you know, African Americans or Black Americans, whatever, you're, um, playing leading role films in Hollywood. But he was the first one, and the first picture I ever seen him in, when, or film, I ever seen him in was uh, a patch of blue years ago on regular TV, and that was. A big film for its day it came out around the year I was born uh, I was born in 66 so it was either 65 or 66 that came out and um, it, it was basically he he falls in love and, and mutually falls in love with a, uh, a white girl who is blind he doesn't know that he's black she just assumes that he is white and so <laughs> That was the first film that I seen him in, and then I seen him in *The Leaves of the Field*, and then *Raisin in the Sun*. All big films, big important films. Uh, *Lilies of the Field* actually is the one that uh, he won his first Academy Award, the first uh, African American to win the uh, Academy Award for leading actor. So why I was always wondering why there's not people talking about his films on YouTube. I don't see too many. <clears throat> so, I, I have a small four disc collection of his films on DVD, and I'm trying to collect most of his films um, that he had made, some of the ones that I haven't seen. And, and, uh, and I was going through the list, and I was like, well, I don't have the like one of the three important ones that he made in the, in 67 there was three films <coughs> that he made <coughs> excuse me in uh 67 it came out in 67 68 um to serve with love where he plays a school teacher in england uh the other one in the heat of the night which everybody should know uh and they wound up redoing it as a tv series back in the 80s or 90s with uh, carol o'connor and then they have, then there's Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. And so I got this today, Sunday, matter of fact, uh, Amazon delivered on Sunday. But I Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, I, and it was the 50th anniversary edition, and I thought it was just a regular Blu-ray. And I picked up the package, and it was like, Wayne, it was heavy. <coughs> Excuse me, but it's a digi book. It didn't state that um, in the description, but I'm happy nonetheless. Um, so, but anyways, guess who's coming to dinner? Came out in 1967, late late 1967, and there, there's Sydney. There was Golf Club at the studio, um, directed by Stanley Kramer, also uh, starring Catherine Hepburn. Catherine Houghton, who was Catherine Hepburn's niece, 
at the time that was their first starring film and then Spencer Tracy which was in his last film he died about 7 12 days after the production of this film and it's the story of um, a couple Cindy Poitier and yeah, Catherine out oh. <coughs> excuse me Catherine Houghton uh, come back home to so they can uh, her parents can meet their fiance when he comes to the door he's black <laughs> and they were kind of shocked because they didn't know and in the 60s um, in that time period that you didn't see films like that um, it was taboo but Cindy Poitier was the perfect actor to play this role. And he did it really, really well. Um, the film, when I was watching a, a, a clip about it last night. Excuse me, I'm just trying not to cough here. Anyways, when I saw a clip about it last night, it was, it was saying that this was the only film that, because back then it Films would go to different states, and certain states had censor boards that would cut, cut out certain clips of the film or would not be shown. And this actually was one of the most popular films in the South. Made a lot of money. And, uh, <coughs> and it wasn't censored. So, except for... Um, it was self-censored, I should say. Um... Because it was still in movie theaters when uh, Martin Luther King was uh, assassinated. And I guess there's a line that Catherine Hepburn uh, asked. Uh, it was about Martin Luther King. said, who is Martin Luther King? Anyways, they wound up pulling the prints off the out of the theaters and cutting that scene out. So, uh, not to upset anybody. But, uh, anyways... It's both, and it shows both sides of the family because uh, Sidney Poitier had to tell his parents about his relationship, and I guess what you want to call reverse racism, and where his parents were thinking, you know, you don't do this type of thing, you don't marry white women, you stay with your own kind, and it just proves to show you that love transcends everything. If you have not seen this film. I highly recommend you watch it. If you're not familiar with Sidney Poitier, I highly recommend that you go out and rent, stream, whatever, buy some of his films. His classic films are are from the late 50s into the 70s. <coughs> he wound up directing Stir Crazy um, with uh, Gene Wilder. And uh, Richard Pryor, he directed a lot of other films too. One with Bill Cosby. Um, can't think of the name of it right now. <laughs> Played in a couple of westerns. But uh, if you want to check out *Bullies of the Field*, that's the one he won the Academy Award. *The Defiant Ones*, where he plays with Tony Curtis, uh, two prisoners, one black, one white, of course. Uh, *Edge of the City*, another great one. Uh, There's another film. Uh, that he plays a doctor. I'm trying to think of the name of the movie right now. Um, no Way Out. No Way Out. Uh, you can find that on the Fox Noir series. Um, Mike, my friend Mike, uh, um, mentioned it last night on Facebook. And uh, I mean, there's plenty of films. Uh, check them out. Let me know. You have any comments? I'd be welcome to have them. Um, what's your thoughts about these, this, this film and uh, if anybody else want to make a video about somebody that a Hollywood star that you kind of think that goes under the radar and they have made a film that was really culturally uh, changing uh, make one I'd love to hear your thoughts thank you for watching this rambling and I'll talk to you later bye